Welcome back to the channel and in today's video I'm gonna be trying to break the sound barrier once again using a brand new part introduced in the airborne expansion Which is the inflatable balloon right here now the closest thing I can think of to this is actually the most recent uh, Sound barrier breaking video I did where I tried to break the sound barrier using the fewest number of gimbal thrusters as I possibly could and gimbal thrusters are just a thrust that always uh, exerts a force directly upwards against gravity. No matter what direction your vehicle is actually facing, the gimbal thrusters will only go upwards. So I tried to create a vehicle that could break the sound barrier, as you just saw right there, using as few as possible. And I was able to get it down to only three gimbal thrusters. Now, inflatable balloons, they pretty much do the same thing functionally. They're going to apply an upwards force, but the method that they do it is um, very, very different. And one of the reasons why I think it is very, very different, at least in the game, obviously in real life, it'd be completely different, but in the game, they're both just applying upwards force. But uh, one of the key differences is that the gimbal thruster is considered propulsion. It is in the propulsion category. However, the inflatable balloon is in the balance category. So it is not intended or considered for propulsion. I don't even know if it's possible to uh, break the sound barrier with inflatable balloons, but the other major difference is the size. This is one gimbal thruster. This is one balloon. And also, let's look at aerodynamics here. The balloon has really terrible aerodynamics. I mean, the gimbal thruster does as well, but it's super easy to just solve that problem with the gimbal thruster. We just have very minimal uh, points of displacement for cutting through the air. Whereas these inflatable balloons have, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six. Is this six by six? So that's 36. 36 displacement points as opposed to two displacement points. So this makes me question whether or not we're even going to approach the sound barrier, but uh, let's see how powerful these balloons really are, especially in contrast to the gimbal jet. So I'm going to do an initial test here. I'm going to start off super simple. Just do one inflatable balloon to the uh, plane cockpit and see how much speed this gets us. And I'm going to compare that to one gimbal jet to see what the force difference is between the gimbal jet and the inflatable balloon. So this caps us out pretty solid at uh, 103 kilometers per hour. So we need to go about 12 times faster in order to break the sound barrier. Now to contrast that with a single uh, gimbal jet. Oh boy. So this, wow. That's a big difference. But inflatable balloons are going to be vastly different. Uh, 274 kilometers per hour. So this is, this is like almost 250% faster. But that wasn't just all thrust power contributing to that. This has a much slimmer profile, so it wasn't nearly as uh, hindered by aerodynamics as the inflatable balloons were. So now that we know that the inflatable balloons are way less efficient than gimbal thrusters, uh, make your predictions. Are we gonna be able to break the sound barrier? And if so, how many balloons am I going to need? I'm gonna make the prediction that this is not gonna be possible, but if it is somehow possible, I'm going to say 11 inflatable balloons with really, really good aerodynamics. Now that is just a complete guess with virtually no confidence behind it. So one balloon got me to 103 uh, kilometers an hour. So now I want to test out, does adding more balloons get us more speed? It does. We pretty much got an, an additional 50% increase in speed by adding it, by doubling our power. So there's definitely some diminishing returns happening here. 50% increase for twice the amount of inflation. I've always heard that inflation was a bad thing, but uh, just seeing it here right in front of my eyes, uh, it really puts it in perspective. All right, so three balloons. Is that gonna get us like to one? Oh, it, we don't even break 200. So one balloon brings us up to 100. Three balloons doesn't even bring us up to 200. So the, man, the uh, the diminishing returns on these is going to be a very, very big challenge. At what point do we just stop gaining any speed? So this is 12 balloons, I think. This isn't going to be as easy to count since the balloons don't take power cores. That is also a really big difference between balloons and gimbal thrusters. But 12 balloons, I'm going to say probably like 300. Oh, okay. 375. Yeah. 
Yeah, this is this is gonna be rough. This is gonna be real rough. So the update I'm noticing I'm, I'm getting used to it now, but the backspace button now I have to hold it and charge it up to actually respawn before you just had to tap it. So this is 12 balloons. Uh, my prediction was going to be 11. So let me put a bunch of aerodynamics on these 11 balloons and see if I can break the sound barrier. So it's not going to be the most aesthetically pleasing design, but uh, I think as far as aerodynamic efficiency goes, the best way to do it is just stack this full of uh, the steepest angled weapons wedge block that we can. So I'm gonna be doing the four by one wedge block. And because this balloon is so massive, we need just a ton of area for aerodynamic to just wedge through the air. The wedge is going to be the superior shape here, but we need to fill in this empty space so that uh, we don't create air pockets that are also just gonna have uh, resistance. And it's my understanding that these grid blocks, although they don't look very aerodynamic, the, the, the point is that they are not actually catching air. They are just going to be distributing air past the, uh, the cavities. We just need to fill the cavities with something. And these are one of the lightest materials, I think, to fill cavities with. All right, so now you can see this balloon has zero red arrows, which means this is an aerodynamically sound piece of equipment. So if I just turn this around and place it on top of my crazy craft here, this should hopefully go much faster than 375 kilometers an hour, hopefully breaking the sound barrier. Let's find out. Okay, here we go. Oh, it, whoa. Why are we going sideways? Oh, are we going to do it? Are we going to do it? If we weren't so sideways... Why are we going so sideways? Oh, this is gonna work. And I think, oh my, I, it, it, it always blows my mind how much. Oh, I see what's happening. We have more weight on the nose than the tail. So because these are buoyancy based, it is actually flipping us over. This is crazy. I didn't, th I, I was wrong. I didn't think this was going to be possible. I now think this is going to be possible and 11 may actually be too many now. But we have this issue, this big issue of our weight distribution or aerodynamic distribution. I think if I add some tail fins in the back, just like I did with my gimbal based one. Yeah, so you can see here, my center of lift is below my center of mass. These are not, uh, this is not feedback information that I had any other time I did a breaking the sound barrier video. This is the first time I have this information to work with. And the way they implemented this is so good. They even give you a warning that says the lift from balloons is below the center of mass. This will flip your vehicle bottom up when flying. The fact that they have all these little warning messages for very for all these particular ways that your your forces can be mismatched is awesome. That's going to be super helpful for new players, especially. But let's see, now that I put these fins back here, that should actually hopefully resist some of that flipping. And maybe we'll be able to break the sound barrier and uh, start cutting down on the number of balloons. Yeah, so now we're staying much straighter. I think we're going to do it. I think... Oh, no. We're slowing down quick, though. <gasps> we need to go to 1234. We're almost at 1200. Oh, man. I th maybe 11 isn't going to be enough. Something's going to be enough, right? Hmm. Oh, and we hit the top. I cannot believe that these are that strong. So another thing I'm noticing is you can see my center of mass is slightly to the uh, the top side. If we look at my seat, you can see at my cockpit, the window's on the top. And I think that's actually factoring into my mass because you can see the center of mass is slightly to the, to the one side of the center of lift. However, if I move this seat over a little bit, uh, then we have the opposite problem where it is slightly to the other side. So I wanna try to, if I can make this as centered as possible, that's gonna give me the straightest trajectory, which is gonna give me the best displacement factor for cutting through the air without uh, slowing down. So I'm going to add just a little, little bit of weight, and this shouldn't add much to my aerodynamic profile because the balloon here, you can see the hitbox of the balloon. This should be blocking the airflow technically, even though visually it's not blocking the airflow. I think uh, mechanically it will be blocking the airflow, and this is just going to be filling in some of that space behind uh, behind the balloon hitbox. So now, did that? Did the addition of that weight help? Not as much as I was hoping. I really want those to be intersecting center to center. All right, as you can see, I've reshaped a lot about the cockpit here just to add some more weight to the bottom of it, and by the looks of it now, it has also served to lower my center of mass a little bit. 
but it is looking like these are pretty well aligned now. Yeah, like if I pan around, they look like they're right in the center of each other. So it may seem counterintuitive. All I've done was add more weight to this vehicle, but we may go faster. I couldn't break 1200 before. Let's see if I can break 1200 now. Oh, see that, that tilt is what I'm trying to avoid. It still tilts for some reason. But right, here we go. All right, it looks like it did have a negative impact. This is actually, this is unexpected. I thought I was gonna have a straighter trajectory, but this does not look like a straighter trajectory at all. All right, so that chain did not have the impact I was expecting, so I'm actually going to delete it. It seemed to actually make my trajectory worse, despite my best efforts. So I'm going to add one more balloon and see if that's gonna be enough to push us over the edge. So I believe this is 12 balloons now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So if this actually breaks the sound barrier, that's gonna be kind of wild that I guessed 11 and I was literally one off. <gasps> We just did it. We broke the sound barrier with inflatable balloons. And the answer was 12. I can't believe I guessed 11 shot in the dark and it was that close. Wow, I wonder if I can do something to this to get it actually down to 12. What if I delete one of these? Like maybe, you know what? Maybe I, maybe I can do this. All right, I'm going back down to 11. I just deleted one of them. I'm gonna change the uh, the seat because this cockpit here is 25 kilograms. I'm gonna go down to the go-kart seat because if it's underneath being blocked by this balloon, I don't think the aerodynamics of the go-kart seat are gonna matter that much. And then hopefully this is gonna be enough to keep us straight. Yeah, the go-kart seat is the lightest of the seats. All right, here we go. This is 11 balloons now. Come on. I want to break this with 11 balloons so bad because I made that prediction at the beginning. Oh man, it's not, it's still in the 1180s. There, like, I feel like there's got to be something I can do to get it just enough power out of 11 balloons. All right, I moved my seat a little bit. I just want to see if that matters. Come on. 11, 80, 90. Oh, we got a little bit more from moving the seats, but not enough. Come on, I want to get it with 11 balloons so bad. I have an idea. I can cut down on weight. This is going to be visually counterintuitive, but my understanding of the game mechanics, that I think this might be technically sound. I'm gonna reduce the aerodynamics to this because these are all still going to have aerodynamic, uh, like each panel will have optimal aerodynamics. And even though in real life, the air would be getting trapped in these crevices, I don't think Trailmakers takes that into account. So the downside is these are not actually attached to each other. So I will have to use these connectors and now everything should be attached. Okay. Let's see if reducing that weight at the top makes a difference. Now you can see my center of mass and lift are a little bit closer to each other. Okay. Can I break the sound barrier with 11 balloons? Oh, we're going up fast. 11. <gasps> 1200. No, go, go, go. We are so close. 1220. I need 14, like 13 or 14 more kilometers. I can't believe how close I am. What else can I change? I genuinely don't know if I can make any other changes. Like this is the lightest seat, unless there is one seat, I lied. There's one seat lighter than, than the go-kart seat now. And it is with the new airborne expansion, there is the passenger seat. The only thing about the passenger seat is you cannot use controls from the passenger seat. It'll save us 7.5 kilograms if I delete this and replace it uh, with this. I was just looking for center of mass. All right, fine. If I take a logic gate, that's only gonna add another 0.6 kilograms. I will use the altitude sensor. So no matter what, this altitude sensor is going to trigger all of these inflatable balloons. So that way I don't need to put input from the passenger seats. But right now this would take off without me if I just spawn in. So to avoid that happening, I'm gonna put a delay of five seconds. So when they receive the input from the altitude sensor, I should have five seconds to get into the passenger seat before this thing takes off. And then hopefully reducing that amount of weight back here 
has gotten me those extra 14 kilometers an hour. Here we go. Oh, get in, get in the seat. Wait, I can't get in the seat? <gasps> no, it's going! It's going off without me! Is it gonna break the sound barrier? I'm gonna turn my volume up. I don't know if I would hear it all the way down here. Sound barrier? You know what? I don't think it counts. I think the problem here is a driver's seat has to break the sound barrier for it to trigger a sonic boom. And the fact that this thing doesn't have a driver's seat on it makes it an unusable creation, literally. I, I thought I would be able to get into a passenger seat, but apparently I can't. I thought I found the solution. It is not the solution though. All right, well, it seems like the go-kart seat is going to be the best option, unfortunately. Is there anything else I can do with these 11 balloons? All right, I just rotated my vehicle just so I can confirm my aerodynamic profile. Like if I delete one of these, you can see now we have a red arrow and that's just gonna slow us down. So we cannot take off weight like that. Okay, hold on, how much does this weigh? This weighs 0 0.8 kilograms. Is there a block that can uh, cause some drag that is less than 0 0.8? No, even the small tail fin is 1.2? Everything here is over a kilogram. Except for this small arrow line, 0 0.8, so that doesn't, uh, doesn't help us. Spoiler? 0 0.1? On a spoiler? Is this going to break the creation if I do this? This is gonna give us an unequal force only in one direction. Oh boy. Yeah, oh no, this is not how things are supposed to go. Hold on. All right, let's see how it feels with just that spoiler. I think, yeah, we're not gonna go straight. Okay, so that's, that's not working very well. The problem is I can't add another spoiler on here like to create this tail fin concept without just adding more blocks that are just gonna, uh, they're gonna defeat the whole purpose of cutting down on weight in the first place. Yeah, this is a bad idea. I don't think that's, that's gonna help us at all. I might have a solution. I was forgetting that air control is on and these are controlled by W and S. When I press W, that is applying a force to the seat. So if I disable that, now no force to the seat will be happening. Oh, we're so close. I can't believe I'm this close to breaking the sound barrier with 11 balloons and I just can't get those final few kilometers an hour. I'm noticing that this wedge corner here has the same aerodynamic rating, extremely aerodynamic versus moderately versus fair. It has the same rating as these four by one. So this is 2.5 kilograms. This is only 0 0.8. So if I delete these, oh, the dimensions don't match up because the balloons are a six by six. This is a four by four. So I cannot put two of them next to each other to cover the balloons without adding more than necessary uh, aerodynamics. I can do a somewhat weirdly asymmetrical concept, but radially I'll make it symmetrical. So I'm gonna be doing this and then I'm going to mirror that on the top. All right, check it out. Now we have this really weird thing going on, but that actually saves me some weight. I should have looked at what my weight was, but I'm pretty sure we are a little bit lighter now. Can I also add that same type of design in here? All right, I'm down to 61.8 kilograms and we still have all bright green arrows and look at the weirdness of the shape of this nose. Let's see if those extra couple of kilograms can give us an extra 15 or so kilometers an hour. I don't think it's gonna get there, but we should be a little bit faster at least. All right, here we go. Whoa, okay, it spins us. Is that bad? Does that matter? Oh, it matters a lot. Wow, I wasn't actually sure if it was gonna, if it was, if it was gonna affect it in that way. So we created a weird corkscrew yeah, so some of the energy is being translated into rotational energy, so we are losing speed despite being uh, a little bit lighter. That's kind of cool, though. I'm going to move the tail fin from the tail up to just underneath the seat here. Uh, I don't think this is going to make a difference. I'm just trying, like, I got to try everything I can at this point. Like, I'm, I'm out of options, and I'm just grasping at straws here to get any amount of change. And yeah, we're just capping off at 215 now, which is weird because like I've tried it multiple times now and I can never get above 215 anymore. But somehow I got above 220 one of the first times with uh, with the design. 
All right, I have stared at this thing for quite a while now, and I cannot think of a single change that wouldn't just make it worse. I don't know if it's possible to do this with 11 balloons, despite how close we actually are. But once I add in this 12th balloon, you can clearly, like, we just zoom right past it to 1260. I just, I guess 12 is the answer. How many inflatable balloons does it take to break the sound barrier? If anyone does it with 11, I would love to know what the secret is to getting in those last few kilometers of speed. Cause I just cannot figure out what I could change. And I'm talking about no glitches. Of course you could do the zero drag glitch, but that defeats the entire purpose of a sonic boom, which is, it happens because of the drag against the air. So even though I didn't think we were gonna break the sound barrier at all, I was wrong about that. I happened to be one balloon off from my actual prediction of how many balloons could break the sound barrier. I'm curious how far off your predictions were and if any of you actually guessed 12 correctly. And be honest, don't lie about it. So I gotta give a shout out to the Red Penguin for bringing this idea to my attention in the comments on a recent video with the airborne expansion. I thought I did all the sonic booms that could be boomed, but uh, turns out the new update has brought some new methods of travel and propulsion. So now we're here. Well, if you guys enjoyed this video, you'll probably enjoy some more that you can find on the end screen right here. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.